Um, today, I hope to take you through um, a few ideas and studies that we have done in the space of peripheral and central inflammation in Parkinson's disease. I'll focus on that um, to give you some thoughts about um, potential biomarkers and therapeutic opportunities. And so we think about uh, the perfect storm for Parkinson's development as something that really starts before the um, uh, neurons are lost. Um, the clinical symptoms, you know, um, begin quite late in the development of the disease and they happen um, once you lose enough dopaminergic neurons and you cross this threshold. And you have motor symptoms that a neurologist can then use to diagnose um, a uh, stage three, uh, practically, um, in the office. Um, there's also non-motor symptoms, which we'll talk about shortly, but many of these symptoms um, can sometimes precede the motor stages, uh, and they can start as early as two decades. And we believe that the best uh, opportunity for arresting um, the disabling motor symptoms is to focus on this pre or prodromal stage of Parkinson's development. Finally, the conclusions are that, you know, there's bi-directional communication between the gut and the brain. We've known that for quite some time. John Cryan has done beautiful studies between that, um, showing that, you know, if you disrupt the gut microbiome, you're disrupting what's coming out of the bone marrow, you're disrupting the conversation with microglia. And we know that peripheral circulation is you know, the gut brain peripheral circulation connection is key for brain health and that it breaks down as we get older. Immune cell aging and chronic inflammation resulting from the G times E interplay represents the perfect storm for PD development. And we postulate it underlies the early prodromal premotor features of PD. And in humans, the lifestyle choices that we make, the diet, exercise, or lack thereof, are all likely to affect this G times C interplay and to impact the gut and BBB permeability, which will influence neuroinflammation and risk for PD. And finally, mitigating chronic inflammation and chronic systemic inflammatory diseases like, you know, IBD and, you know, metabolic syndrome, leaky gut, fatty liver may all reduce innate immune dysfunction and risk for PD and its progression.